welcome back to the PC Gamer Weekend live stream. I'm here with Daniel and Pontus to talk about Cobalt WASD. So, Cobalt WASD, multiplayer bomb defusal game. Tell me how it works. So, uh, uh, if you've played Counter Strike before, uh, it's uh, one of uh, me and da Daniel's favorite games, and uh, that's basically what we base the main game mode on. So, this is a round-based uh, multiplayer. Two teams facing off against each other. One team is trying to plant the bomb, the other one is trying to defuse it. Um, and then the innovative part that we've tried to work most on is, is basically the platform movement and the items in game that you're using. So, just how hectic do things get in terms of platforming and all the weapons? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we just had a tournament and uh, we rushed over here to uh, make it for this uh, uh, live broadcast mm -hmm. and uh, I, I can still feel my adrenaline even though I didn't play, so oh it, it can get really, really hectic. Mm -hmm. Can you show me a bit of an action just to see exactly yes. what it's like? Yeah? Uh, and, well, right now what Daniel has on screen is just uh, basically a couple of peaceful uh, robots. So we're just showing off what it looks like when it stands still. For once. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so if you look, uh, open up the buy menu there, uh, you'll see what you have in game. You have a couple of different categories that you can choose from between each round. And uh, basically what you have, similar to Counter-Strike, you have your uh, main weapon, your sidearm, uh, your uh, grenades, and somewhat something like an armor as well. Uh, but apart from that, we've also focused on adding special equipment like movement abilities, like you can have a hook and swing around like your Tarzan, or uh, yet shoes, or, or, um, or a shield if you want to have that. And also the different suits that you have, besides giving you extra health, they also uh, give you some sort of special ability, which is unique for, or sort of unique for each team as well. Um, but if, if you, uh, Donnelly, if you maybe uh, buy something special and just run around, right now the, the bots that we're playing against are peaceful to make it slow down a bit, uh, to just showcase the, uh, the actual uh, items that we have in game. Mm -hmm. So right now, what have you bought? Uh, some yet uh -huh. to fly. Yeah. So I can fly now, which is nice. That is nice, definitely. Yeah. Let's you fire from above, which must take getting you by surprise every now and again. Yep. Yes. And I have a big rifle, so I can shoot. And I also have a sidearm, which shoots a little bit less. Mm -hmm. And then I have these time bombs, which will give me like a time dilation field. Oh, wow. Which can be used to trap bullets in, in the space here, so that it makes like an effective wall almost. So, so what we've focused on with this game is that we, uh, besides wanting to have like the, your simple running gun uh, pistols that work like any other pistol you, you shoot and the fi you fire a bullet, we also want to have some sort of e unique equipment so you have some sort of uh, control and creativity when you're designing your character. And we also want them to sort of work well together so you have to communicate with your teammates and let them know what you're buying so that they can complement your your equipment, basically. But these are uh, two kind of straightforward uh, sidearms. And right now, Daniel switched to another main weapon, which is the teleporter gun. Oh, nice. And uh, what that's, that basically does what, what it says. It, it teleports you. But also, if you hit an enemy, that enemy will be slowed down in a time bubble for a short period of time. So you can come up close and, and get them from behind or something like that. So just how much freedom do you have with the kind of weapon combat choice you go for? Like, can you go in hard and fast, or can you kind of pull back and pick them off at a distance? Uh, so, um, uh, the, the range is quite wide, uh, but as I said, you have one side is sort of the attacking side, trying to get to the bomb uh, plant uh, uh, bases. Uh, so that team is more focused on having like heavy, heavy weaponry that is fast and is more focused on attacking. Uh, while the other side has some uh, equipment there that is more prone to being a bit standoffish. Of course, we have everything in between as well, but if you want to be the, the guy who's standing in the back and just looking out over the battlefield, you can do that. If you want to run in close and just get everyone from, from up close, then you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome to know. Okay. So what kind of tips do you have for people who are just starting off with the game and might find all the chaos a little bit overwhelming at first? Yes. Um, uh, the one thing that, that is quite nice that we have focused a lot of, uh, on uh, 
uh, is, is, are the bots. So we have, you have a lot of options to play with bots that basically don't do anything. They, they're just like peaceful targets, everything from that up until quite hard bots to play against. And for me personally, that's something that I like because I know that I don't have the stress of facing off with someone that I know is behind a screen and sort of grinning when I'm, when I'm dying. So uh, that's one thing that I would do. But basically, uh, just find a friend and, and play one-on-one -on, -one, like, on each team and, and learn the game that way. That would, that would be my one, one tip for, for a beginner. Yeah. So how do you tackle big groups of enemies then when you get right into it? Like, Sorry, how, how do you tackle bigger groups of enemies? Like if you've got like four facing you and you're only one, what kind of weapons best for taking them on? Do you want to... Um, any weapon that has some kind of stunning ability or uh, area control is mm -hmm. good for that. Um, I have some boss down here, for example, and if I toss down these uh, stun grenades, it'll sap them with little bolts mm -hmm. and make them uh, like done for a little while and also push them away. And that way I can uh, select my targets more specifically and like do it with those two first and they'll keep those away. So I'd say anything like that. Sort of control the area, area control. As any game you want it to be as much a one-on-one -on -one as possible. So you want to spread out uh, four versus one to four one-on-one. -on -one. So that's what you always want. Unless, of course, you're doing uh, something uh, more in line with the... Uh, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please do. Yes, uh, it's, it's more easy. Uh, so you can also buy these vehicles. And, and some of the vehicles have super powerful weapons. Uh, like this bike has uh, something that's called a thermal launcher, which is like a homing uh, mini-nuke, in a way. Um, that sounds like it would be so, somewhat powerful. Yes, so here are some bots, and I'll shoot it over here. And it sort of homes, and it blew up three of them, mm. like, instantly. That's also good. Also, definitely, yeah. And, and then it's bad if they are clumped up, so they, you will almost want them to be clumped up. Mm -hmm. So what kind of variation is there with the kind of maps you can have in Cobalt WASD? Uh, the maps that we have designed ourselves are pretty straightforward. It's always two bomb sites. Uh, we try to, to sort of mimic the, the map design philosophy of, of Counter Strike of having like a clear, two clear paths and, and maybe a middle area. So it's easy to divide the team and, and strategize where you're going to place yourself. But uh, alongside this game, we have also a, a map editor. So it, it's possible for players to upload their own maps and their own creations and variations to the main format. But for our official maps, we're sort of keeping it to, to the simple two bomb sites and, and, uh, and a middle to, to go in between. So are there any like, environmental changes to the maps, like certain areas of the map that would give you different effects or something? Yes. Um, so this game uh, is originally based on our previous game, Cobalt. And we've taken a lot of the, the things that we designed for that game and tra transplanted them into this game. And with that is we have a lot of uh, control in the map editor to have triggers and stuff to change the map in different ways. Every, everything basically from destructible terrain to, uh, to doors that open uh, and with code locks and stuff like that. So yes, there, there are the possibility to change the maps uh, in various ways. For, again, for our official maps, to keep it simple, it's just a few maps that have like environmental changes that we, we're playing around with. Yeah. I guess I could show one of those. Yeah. It'll take a time to yeah, load. That's so. fine. <laughs> Don't worry. So, what other kind of modding tools do you have then? Like, Sorry? What other kind of modding tools do you have for the game? Um, we have um, a built-in tool in the original Cobalt game where you create a mod based on Lua. So you make an init script and it has uh, a bunch of different hooks that you can uh, use to change the definitions of the game. So you can change all the, the actors, the items, the weapons, the, the bullets, the game modes, uh, the graphics, the menus, um, and everything else almost. It's not a perfect modding system or everything is possible, but you can make, for example, Cobalt WASD from the original Cobalt. So, oh, nice. So awesome. we, when we developed WASD, we implemented everything through the modding API. Mm -hmm. So everything we've done uh, is basically possible. Awesome, nice. So this is another map, a different one from Yes, this is another map which has a, a radioactive puddle, which is, I guess, an environmental effect, mm -hmm. like down here. So if you go down here, you'll be uh, radioactive. 
That's and good or bad? Yeah. Well, that's bad because if you look on the minimap now, you'll see uh, I have a big uh, nuclear symbol on me. Mm -hmm. And that is visible for all teams. So I'm now visible for everyone. Probably not a good thing for your enemies to be able to come and hunt you down. No, exactly. So that's a bad thing. Uh, and it's also um, a tech that the, the red team has. So they have it in the form of uh, a radioactive crossbow, for example, or a radioactive vial, which they can use in the same way to throw across the map to uh, hopefully hit something. And hopefully. Uh, hopefully. And when they're hit, they show up on the map, and suddenly you have more information before picking a bomb site. Mm -hmm. As you might have noticed, it, it, there is no line of sight in this game. So you can, ev everything that is on the screen is visible to, to everyone, basically. But we do have special suits with ab abilities like stealth, so you can become almost invisible. And in that case, it's usable to have something like a radioactive vial where you can mark them on the map and they're visible even though they're, they're not. So. Definitely, yeah. So how do you unlock all these different kinds of weapons and armor in the game? Like, are they unlocked from the beginning, or are there special things you have to do? Uh, so, so it's similar in, in the same vein as, as uh, Counter Strike, you have a buy menu and you have an economy from each round. So you can't buy everything from the from the first round, but you collect money as you go along, as you win a round, or as you kill an enemy, or, or do something special like combinations and stuff like that. Uh, you'll get more money, and then that way you'll unlock more weapons to buy. And that's uh, that's also, as in Counter Strike, it's an important part of the meta meta game to sort of coordinate your economy with your teammates. So, for instance, when you're powerful, you want your uh, teammates to be powerful as well. You don't want to be the only one with an armor, for instance. No, definitely not. Yeah. So obviously, Counter Strike is a really heavy influence in the game. Any other games that have kind of inspired Cobalt WASD? Um, I, I would say uh, so. We started out with Cobalt, which was uh, basically gamepad control and or, or keyboard control, and we wanted to add a mouse mouse aid to it. Uh, that's part, partially why it's called WASD because that's a traditional WASD and mouse. Um, so with that, I think we we, uh, we looked at games like classics like Solda, uh, which is uh, also an action platform and controlled with WASD and mouse, and uh, games like T World, which is a free-to-play game that's out on Steam now as well, uh, that has the same sort of control scheme. So uh, the control scheme is partially inspired by that. Uh, initially, with the different suit abilities, I think we also looked a bit to games like Overwatch, of course, with abilities and stuff, but it's grown in it more in a, in a, in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, what kind of freedom do players have in terms of the weapons? Like, can you use them in different ways? Can you drop them when you're fighting? Like, what kind of things can you do with them apart from just shooting? So, uh, the same as Counter Strike, you can drop things, and which is important for the economy management, because mm -hmm. some players are going to have more money than the other ones. So dropping a gun for your teammate is, of course, a good strategy. And uh, also stealing weapons from the opposing enemies Definitely. is even better. Um, and it also gives you a unique uh, weapon on your team because you can't buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, which also creates interesting combinations, like um, having a time jumper, which is a teleporter gun and a slowdown gun, is something that only the red team has. And having a, a proto, uh, a metal face sentry uh, that you can deploy on the wall it's also something that the blue team only has. But if you combine them two, you can deploy sentries that shoot the slowdown bubbles. Mm -hmm. uh, so it creates a new kind of thing that doesn't exist unless you steal it uh, from the enemy team. Yeah, amazing. Great, well, thanks for talking about Cobalt WASD. It's been great to see it in action. You can just about pass all the crazy action going on on screen, which is definitely a good sign. Yeah, yes. great. Thank you, thanks. All right, thank you. And I'll so, return to dancing. Yeah, dancing, just dancing there the screen dancing away. The yeah, well. it's happy, it's bouncing up and down. No, it's actually in the game. It's in the game. Oh, yeah. It's good. Another bonus feature that players can look yeah, forward to. Yeah, it actually stuns enemies. Oh, really? Yeah, so if you, yeah, if you can keep up your dancing moves, um, it's only in this disco here. Okay. But if you if you keep dancing well and enemies come to you, you'll stun them with your hearts so that they get. Because they'll just be like overwhelmed yeah, yeah, exactly. by your amazing dancing exactly. skills. We'll definitely run that. So it's a valid strategy. Yep. Definitely, completely. Yep. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. So up next we have the first half of the PCube Indie Showcase. Tune back in in 15 minutes to see all their games in action.